welcome. Today is day 11, and I hope you're feeling really empowered by committing to a practice. And even if you missed a day, hi Shiva, brought Shiva up today. Um, my husband has the kids and they're on a road trip, so Shiva and I are practicing today at the studio. But even if you find that you have missed a day here or there, I hope you're making time to make those days up because it's the commitment and the consistency to any good change. So today on our mat, we'll just kind of see what happens. Uh, you might be blocked, but you will need a strap. And if you don't have a strap, a necktie will do, and we'll kind of talk about some ways to um, situate that when we work with some chest opening today. Let's start with our feet as wide as a straddle. Toes are forward, legs engaged, pelvic neutral, pelvic core is nice and strong, lower contraction in the glutes. Inhale, extend the arms overhead, keep your inner thighs engaging as you extend back, exhale, push your hips back, bow forward towards the floor. Nice long spine, hug your sit bones together, let's just walk our torso to the right and left, try to gain some nice space here. Nothing is locked, everything is very fluid. Feeling a lot of energy today. Had class this morning and then had another workout, and now I'm back here on my mat as a commitment to my 40 days. Breathe. So, again, just continue to go right and left. Watch not to lock the knees, stay fluid through the thigh muscles. And then back to center. Bend your knees, exhale, core is strong, roll up, hips forward, inhale, and exhale, hands to heart. Awesome, inhale, arms rise up. Anchor your shoulders, interlace your fingers for clockwork. Let's move to the left, inhale, reach. Exhale, keep your head from peekabooing, peel back on your left arm, inhale, and exhale, three more. Release the leg back plank position. 
Now keep the folds of the elbows forward. Feel free to drop to the knees or come to the tops of the feet and glue your ankles together. Keep your core lifted. Push into your knuckles. Lift through the core, roll over your toes, downward facing dog, exhale. Exhale, drop to your knees, grab your yoga block, and place it onto the floor. Turn your palms face in. Let's go into puppy dog. Roll the toes under, lift through the deep core to help you lift your hips. So really helping to create that openness, the same openness we would use in up bow. So I'll have you come into that puppy dog. Push down through your forearms as you lift through your hips. Feel free bent knees, especially if you're tighter. Otherwise, your whole body's going to be sunk into your shoulder girdle in a not so friendly way. Breathe. Walk your feet back, inhale, exhale, we'll lift through the belly, glide forward, roll your spine out. Now turn your left fingertips behind the right elbow, open towards me into a side plank. Open your chest, feel free, top foot to the floor, or you can also stagger the feet. Knee to the mat won't work though. Inhale, sink your hip, exhale, press up one. Nice inhale, exhale, core is strong. Feel the oblique, inhale, three, and exhale, inhale, four, Exhale, keep breathing. At any time, just hold side plank. We're going five more. Exhale, four. Last one. Cross forearms. I'm going to turn away from you. Keep the elbow within range of the shoulder. Open your chest completely. Again, feel free to tap foot to the floor. Hold and breathe at any time. Remember, stability before mobility. Inhale, exhale, lift. Use your breath, pelvic core. Try not to make your shoulder do all the work here. Five more, just hold it. And exhale, back into puppy dog. Forearms down, core lifts the hips. Press back, nice stretch through the underarm carriage. Breathe. Pressing down through the forearms, let's start to work with some forearm balance prep here. Lifting one foot, little jump. So the stronger the core, the better awareness we have with the core. The better understanding we have of staying in that shoulder girdle appropriately, the more control we're going to have. So flexibility does definitely play a role here. Feel free to go against the wall. So just practice the hop, stay lifted, try not to drop into the shoulders. It's going to feel really negative in the neck. And then let's see if we can come up into a forearm balance. Deep breathing. 
Bend your knees, core, roll yourself up, hug your inner thighs, lower glutes. Glide the hips forward, feel free hands on the hips. Exhale, hands to prayer. Let's try the opposite side. Warrior two, level out. Exhale, draw deep. Strong stride, try to level your pelvis. No dropping out of the abdomen. Lead with the elbows, extend through the arms. Relax your shoulders, full rotation on the neck. Breathe. I really like warrior twos because we open ourselves into a frontal plane when most of the day we're moving in a sagittal plane. Feel strong on the back foot, not collapsing any either way. Lower your arms. Now grab your block on the way if necessary. Rotate runner's lunge. Lift your hip step back into plank. Let's play with the footing, but again, strong core, stay lifted. Inhale, push forward with your toes. Exhale, push back into your heels without hinging in your hips. Inhale forward and exhale back. Good shoulder girdle stability and good shoulder mobility really correlates back to our core. Watch not to let the folds of the elbows turn in. Four more. Pelvic floor. So when I think about core functional fitness, it's really a method of application. Lift through the hips, downward facing dog. So I apply a left down or into yoga, even though I have sacral moves that definitely come from core functional fitness, it's really the idea of how we move, not necessarily movements in itself. 10 times down, dog push up. Keep the strength of the deep belly right where you're folded. And again, let's come down, inhale, elbows bend. Exhale, push long. Thighs are strong, knees are never locked. Try not to come forward. So even if you're doing micro bends, I'd rather have you there and really developing traps and deltoids. Breathe, press down through your pointer finger. See, even in my own practice, I can't stop teaching. <laughs> it's okay. Try to stay even in the arms. And again, strong pelvic core, even though mentally you're probably thinking, how, do I, how does that really resonate? You're lifting yourself through your trunk. Two more. Last one. Nice. Inhale, lift your right leg, keep the hips square. High to the ball of the foot, tuck it in. Lift, 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 so you feel your core turn on. Inhale, lengthen. Right hip pulls back, runner's lunge. Exhale, roll yourself up. Inhale, elbows bend, arms extend, high lunge. Breathe. Move back a little bit. Inhale through the nose, either arm swipe to T, hands to heart, hips are alongside the ears. Come forward, warrior three, a block at its highest level with just your fingertips, one or both hands would also be appropriate. Hug on the upper inner thighs and keep the length without flaring your rib cage. Breathe. Hands down, leg up. Again, stability in the base leg. Breathe, maybe no hands. Slowly, no hands, drop back, runner's lunge. To the floor, lift your hips, which makes space for the foot, but also engaging in the front walls of the core. Slide the leg back into plank. Lift through the belly, downward facing dog. Again, press and rotate so we can get that scapula pulling away from the spine. Breathe. Bend your left knee, extend it up and back. Keep the hips square, lift high to the ball of the foot. Knee tucks in rather than coming low and sliding. Pull up, 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 up. Lift your left hand if necessary. Inhale, lengthen, keep the right hip back, or left hip back. Exhale, roll up, strong core, feel that lift. Inhale, arms extend. Breathe. Soft jaw, kind heart, feel really good 
about the last 10 days. Exhale, push forward, keep the base knee bent until you find your angle. Even if your angle is here, more like a 45, it's fine. As I work to use the lower glute, I'm really spraying my hips to make that happen. Bend the knee in order to assist even more. Now as you lift your arms, don't let yourself be confused that dropping the ribs makes it easier to lift the arms. You're not helping your shoulder girdle any. Ah! All right, let's breathe. Exhale, hands down. Lifting up again, bottom knee and arch does not collapse. Breathe. Exhale, bend the knee, drop the foot back. Rounders lunge, lift the hips, step back into plank. Knees to the mat, sit back, exhale, devotional. Full deep breathing, offer gratitude, and again, just feel really good in the moment here. Exhale, roll yourself up, hands behind you. Inhale, now roll your shoulders, bend your elbows, lift your heart, really press through your palms. You definitely can be on a block or blocks if you need that extra height. Now, depending on how openness your quads and um, hip flexors have, lift your hips, walk your hands to your heels, and allow your pelvis to open, no glute squeezing. Lift through your sternum, and drop back through the head. Exhale, strong core contraction, bring yourself up. Slide your arms forward, now tilt your pelvis up, anahata, heart opener. Drop through your underarm as you walk your hands forward. Really feel a nice stretch through the underarm. Chin or forehead to the floor, let's take a couple good breaths. Up. Let's work with headstand. So if you're working with headstand and you're more comfortable, feel free to go against a wall. You're about a hand's length away from the wall. You have two options. You have forearm balance headstand, which to check, you want to make sure your forearms aren't shorter than your head or it's not going to work. So if you can extend your arms at least level or higher than the top of your head, you're good. If not, you're going to go three point. Head is higher than the hands. You should be able to see your fingertips. So if you need to use a wall, feel free to use the wall, or even your feet onto a couch if you feel like you need that help with lift. If you're on your forearms, it's 30, 70, 30% 30 of the weight is on the head, push down into your forearms, just like forearm down dog, or just like sphinx pose. So forehead to the floor, or top of the head to the floor, you should be looking at your thighs, otherwise you're on tripod, hands on the floor. I go back and forth between what I like. Pull off your shoulders, off your neck, Lift your hips, come really high to the tippy toes. Now either stay here, you can also put your feet on the couch or your feet on the block. You're slightly resisting the head and the hands. Slowly lift either one leg or both legs at a time into head sink. Down dog is a great alternative. Be where you are and be happy with that. Breathe. Yoga is not about punishing ourselves. It's about celebrating and working just a little bit harder. Breathe. Exhale, slowly feet tip down, maybe a little hover off the floor. Drop your knees to the mat. Take a couple breaths, devotional or child's pose.
Exhale, roll yourself up. Great job. Just bring the arms behind. Open through the heart. Lift through the sternum. No throwing the head. And exhale, release. Roll the shoulders. Take a couple of breaths. Nice. All right, back into tabletop. Bend your elbows, hug the elbows tight, lift through the deep belly, that transversus. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg, score off the hips. High to the ball of the foot, knee tucks in, come sternum, knee to flank. Relift your hips and push it back. Nice. Inhale, high to the ball of the foot, knee tucks in, roll, 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 like I'm bringing nose to knee. And then my head pops out at the last second. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, push it back. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift the knee a little higher. Exhale, push it back. When I mean push, I mean you're lifting with your core. Inhale. High to the ball of the foot. Exhale, roll through, come forward. Inhale, hold and lift. Exhale, draw yourself back. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale. Exhale, roll through so you're not sinking as you come forward. Hold it, inhale, exhale. Push it back and up. Inhale, high to the foot, lower the opposite. Exhale, set your knees down and the motion. And exhale, roll yourself up. <sighs> All right, grab your strap. So if you're working with a necktie, kind of tie a knot so that you have enough room for your feet. If you're looping with a strap or a dealing de 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 strap, same thing. Make a loop so that the strap can hold and both your feet can fit into it. Set your strap off to your side so it's within the arm's reach and come onto your belly. Lay your legs parallel and root your pubis bone to the floor. Inhale, bend your knees, grab, let's turn our hand, grab from the inside this time. Flex your feet, let your shoulders roll open. Now stay rooting in your pubis bone. Inhale, breathe in deeply. Slightly lift the chest, exhale, press up, let your sternum lift off the floor. Inhale, draw your heels towards each other in order to open the chest and push back into your feet. Exhale, lower down, hands under the shoulders, inhale, and exhale, turn the head to one side, breathe. All right, turn the head to center, grab your strap, loop your feet into the strap. If you need to sit up to do that, that's fine. So if you find that you tend to have more of a rounding forward torso, more of a kyphotic back, you're going to love hate this move at the same time. The necessity to open through the front chest and allow your thoracic region to be mobile, but still the ability to be stable is a combination that most people tread very lightly with, meaning there's not a whole lot of balance between those two. So I want you to think about letting the bottom ribs come forward, keep the elbows pulled tight to really open up through the tricep, through the underarm and get into that serratus, so kind of the bottom near the uh, bottom of the shoulder here. So you're really trying to open up. It's most important to drop your shoulders. All right, head plows to the floor. This is a great prep for upward facing bow. Some people call that wheel. Inhale through the nose. Breathe laterally into your lungs. Exhale, push your feet back and use the leverage of your feet. Drop heavy into your shoulders, feels kind of sloppy. Inhale through the nose. Find a position for the head. Exhale through the nose. upper traps that are tighter, you're really going to feel this. Breathe. And exhale, lower down slow. Release the legs back, arms at your side, press the head to one side, soften your body and breathe. All 
All right, breath is moving. You'll thank me later. Let's come back again. And if you notice you're holding one hand on top of the other, switch just so that your hand pattern is a little bit more balanced now from the last time you did it. We're not pulling forward. Remember, the feet are pulling back. So the key is you're kind of face planting at first. As you place your face towards the mat, get your feet nice and close. But you want to be able to actually be mobile here. Inhale, breathe into your lungs, root your pubis down. Exhale, press out. Again, relax, relax, relax. You can get five breaths in. That's great. And exhale, lower down. Release your feet. Head to one side, breath, relax and breathe. And just surround yourself with positive thoughts. I think it's easy for us to point out all of our flaws and all of our imperfections, all the things that we're doing wrong. But very seldomly do we make it a conscious point to notice all the things we're doing right. We confuse that with being egotistical or self-centered. And when we do that in a humble and loving way, it's anything but that. So nice big breath in. Use the strength of your deep transversus so we're not lifting through the head first, but we're also not pushing up through the booty. Stiffen through the trunk of your body, firm legs, elbows tight, exhale, push up. So it's more of a floating sensation. Inhale, push forward with your toes. Feel free to stick a block or blocks underneath the torso and pelvis. So as you inhale, push forward, exhale, shoulders back, elbows tight. We find that, oh, it's gonna catch us from not getting sloppy, sloppy. And then everything lifts off the block at once, pelvic core engages, press back up. The challenge for many is to not let the elbows go wide so we stay in the chest and deltoid. I want you to get into your triceps and upper traps. Let's go one more time. Inhale, forward. Exhale, hold it, inhale, push in your fingertips. Exhale, press back up. Sit back into your heels. Sink your hips to the left. Walk your torso to the right. Open the back body. And then back to center. Let's go opposite side. And then back to center, nice job, roll yourself up. Awesome, move your strap off to the side and grab both of your blocks. Now, if working with up bow, if you want to work against the wall, take the lip of your baseboard and set one block on each side of where your head can fit right into that space. So you have enough space for your head to wedge right between. Literally the top of your head is pretty darn close to the wall. So that can be really helpful if one, your upper body is stiffer because as the hand is on an angle, it's easier to open the chest, easier in a way that you're going to be able to actually have some success there. Don't worry, you're not escaping anything. We're not making it easier, but we're making it more efficient and effective. Also, if you have wrist pain. So otherwise, you can go flat on the floor, which I'm going to do. If your legs tend not to listen to you, feel free to strap up your legs so your feet can go in and then just allow your strap to let out a little bit. And then you can push against your strap to allow the hips and pelvis to open a little bit more. You can also do the same thing with the arms. My elbows are going to be shoulders width. Make sure your strap is held tight. So when you lift, you don't get wonky elbows. So lots of options. All right, lady, you're back. If you're using the wall, awesome. If you need to walk down the wall, that's fine with me. Nice big breath in. Tuck your fingers under your shoulders if you're going flat palmed. Nice big breath in. Breathe into your lungs. Ground your feet. Exhale, come to the top of the head, readjust hands. Inhale, exhale, lift, keeping the elbows again from turning out. Relax the glutes and try not to throw your chest forward, because that can do a lot to the upper back. Inhale, think about going straight up. Exhale, watch your knees not to fall apart. Going back into that bow on the belly is a great alternative as well. All right, so if you want a little bit more hurrah, this is an easy pose for you, let's do five low push-ups. Inhale, exhale, keep the elbows pulling in. It's easy to want the elbows to go out. Last one. 
Tuck the head and bring the knees into the chest. Nice, rock side to side on your back. Great job. Hopefully that core heat was pumping, mine was. All right, nice long spine. Bring the legs up to a tabletop position. Cross your right leg over your left leg. I'll do the same as you. Now smush your thighs together. Grab your outer shins or ankles, kind of like it's a motorcycle. You're grabbing the handlebars. Now press your sacrum into the floor as you draw your heels one to each side. Inhale, kind of a nice reclined cow face pose. Exhale, now depending on how tight, feel free to roll your thigh muscles to help with any pinching, but also just even holding the knees, that might be enough. Feel free, a gentle little rocking side to side, but most importantly, listen to your body and breath. Am I forcing or allowing? I use that mantra off my mat. Am I forcing something that's not yet available to me? Am I forcing something that's not even mine? Every time we step onto the yoga mat, we should be humble. Every time we step off of the mat, we should be humble. We are no better than the next. But we definitely can work together to support each other. All right, release the legs. Happy baby. Draw your sacrum into the mat as you draw your feet to the sky. Feel free to hold from the inside or outside. Go with what feels most appropriate. Again, as you press your thighs down, push your sacrum, tailbone, so you're slightly arching the lower back off the mat. That's just going to bring more of a stretch into the bottom of the pelvis and hamstring attachment sites. Breathe. Little inverted straddle. Again, tip your sacrum into the floor as you draw your feet to the earth. your hands for help, guide the legs together, cross your left leg over, tight thighs, and then let's drive the motorcycle. Grab your feet, notice I'm trying to flex my feet and neutral my ankles so my feet don't go crooked. And then again, press your hips down as you draw the heels towards the earth, relax your shoulders. If you can smile, you're doing just fine. Lately in my own life, I've been really been reflecting how everything in life is a reflection for you. And I find myself continually being humble and brought back to that place where we have to do a little self-reflection. We have to do a little bit of non-judgmental reflection and ask ourselves, is what I'm doing helping or hurting myself? Is what I'm doing helping or hurting others? Hi, Shiva. All right, happy baby, open it up. We can lay up in a little bit. Shiva, hold it down. You can lay with me in a second. <laughs> See, this is what I gotta go through every day. Shiva, go, lay down, right here. Breathe. But as you step off your mat today, really try to pay attention to that mirror. That mirror that everybody around us, the people that annoy us, the people that we love, strangers. And we can constantly reflect and ask, how can I learn from this? How can I become a better person because of this? Rather than blaming everyone else, we're even blaming ourselves. Yoga should force us in a good way to grow deeply. Now into a straddle, inhale. Sometimes she just has to say hi. <laughs> and exhale. Again, that little tilt to the lower back. Relax your shoulders. If hands and feet seem a little out of reach, bring your hands to your calf. I still get quite a bit out of it, even on my knees or calves. Bring your legs up and together, knees down. Lengthen your legs out. We'll do a little bit of some core work here before we come into Shavasana. Neutral pelvis. Watch not to let the lower back arch. There's a subtle sensation of you trying to press your back towards the floor. Trying and toward are the key words here. We are not actually jamming it into the mat. But that will help keep your belly, what I like to call rectus poofus, 
the belly muscles popping out, you want to try to keep them held tight. Not sucking, held tight. Pelvic floor engages, relax your shoulders, either palms face in at your sides. If you need them under your sacrum, fine. You can also go arms overhead, palms face in, which definitely will create more of a challenge. Inhale, flex your feet. Exhale, lift the legs one inch up off the floor. Yes, there is some glute work, but there has to be some deep belly and pelvic core work. Breathe. Now set your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Exhale, internal rotation. Roll from your hip socket. Try to touch your big toes to the floor. Inhale, external rotation. Touch your pinky toes down and soften your body. Inhale, broaden your back. Open your arms. Breathe in deeply. And breathe out completely. Again, surround yourself with gratitude. Surround yourself with those mirrors. Don't be afraid of them. I used to be very hard on myself and punish myself because I thought I was what was wrong with the world. And yoga has done wonders for my body, my mind, and my spirit. I want to remind you again, it takes a very strong yet humble person to look at the things around them and say, how can I be better because of this? Not better than others in an egotistical way, but better as an asset to themselves and society. of the knees and leg height that changes the relax the release and the sensation through the hips and spine so roll right over your glute muscles and get into your sacrum and lower back knees into your chest give yourself a great hug remove your sit bones try to break them free roll to your side and come up to a seated position Thank you so much for your time, your energy, and your effort today. It's, again, amazing what 40 days can do. I know I'm only on day 11, but just this commitment for myself um, to continue to follow through with something has been remarkable for my attitude, but also for my accomplishments in other areas of my life, as well as my mental clarity. So, again, when you leave here today, and if it's the evening by the time you watch this, and it's going to be tomorrow, then do it tomorrow, look at life as a mirror. Again, not what's wrong with me and what's wrong with the world, you, 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 but how can I take what I observe and say, one, is that something I'm doing? Two, do I need to change myself and better myself? Or three, what can I learn to, in order to help others as well as help myself? Thank you so, so much. I look forward to this journey with you. For more information, visit my website, hopesavara.com. And please leave a comment and let people know um, what you think about this journey or this practice so others can practice along with you as well. Namaste.